Hi all, welcome to our channel, Book Summaries. We are here to save your time to provide the best summaries of books in less than 10 minutes. Today, we serve you a summary of the book, How to Make People Like You in 90 Seconds or Less, written by Nicholas Boothman. Let's dive in and don't forget to like and subscribe, so you can grow your knowledge quick and free of charge. Chapter 1 Your relationships at work, and even at home will improve when you learn how to connect with people. How attractive you are, does not really matter. To lead a happy and healthy life, we need other people. The quality of our relationships with other people has a significant impact on our development and self-growth. You create new connections in your brain when you put yourself out there and network with others. You remain young and alert as a result. Chapter 2 We are social animals. We are driven by nature to develop social networks, organizations, and communities. When our forefathers gathered around the fire to eat woolly mammoth steaks, or sew animal skin together, thousands of years ago, they were connecting. How well you can connect with others, will have a big impact on whether, people think you are likable. People that are likable, typically make it known that they are open to social interaction, and small talk. In the upcoming chapters, we'll talk about how to interact with others. Chapter 3 Making a good impression, in the first few seconds of a meeting, is crucial. If you provide a positive first impression, you give the sense that you are sincere, secure, and reliable. Making connections, is meeting people. Meetings frequently take on several formats. The woman on the bus, who turns out to share your love of hockey, is one of those fortuitous encounters. The man your uncle introduced you to, because he enjoys cars, great wine, and port, just as much as you do, is an example of when it's by choice. The first step in greeting, is to open your body language and attitude. This is the time, to really feel, and be aware, of what you're feeling. Try to maintain a positive attitude as much as possible, and keep your heart aimed, directly at the person you're meeting. Check that your arms, and hands are not covering your heart. Unbutton your jacket, whenever possible. Smiling comes next, after making eye contact. Make sure your smile conveys your mood, and be the first to smile. Through your open body language, eye contact, and beaming smile, you have now successfully attracted the other person's attention. Saying hi, or hello, is the next step after flashing a friendly smile. Whichever one you choose to say, make sure to do so in a pleasant tone, and with your name attached. For example, hello. Harry here. Be the first to introduce yourself, with a smile, and eye contact. This is the time when you can learn a lot about the person you're meeting, information that will be helpful to you later in the conversation. Reach out your hand, to the other person, and if possible, repeat their name, two, or three times to help you remember it. For example, I'm glad to have met you, Deborah. The lean, is the final part of your introduction. This action can be as subtle as a forward angle to indicate your interest, and openness, as you begin to synchronize with the person you've just met. Chapter 4 The next step is to establish rapport, after introducing yourself. Rapport is the formation of common ground. A zone of comfort in which two, or more, people can mentally unite. Rapport is the lubricant, that keeps social interactions flowing smoothly. The reward for establishing rapport with someone, is their positive acceptance. This response will be short and simple, but it will imply something along the lines of, I know I just met you, but I like you, so I will trust you with my attention. By chance, rapport develops as a result of a shared interest, or when you find yourself in certain situations or circumstances. For example, assume you travel to a foreign country where people do not speak your language, and you do not understand theirs. You begin to feel uneasy, but then you meet someone from your own country, possibly your own state. This person speaks your language, and presto, you have a new best friend. This is rapport by chance. The only way, to find common ground when you don't share anything in common with the person, is to deliberately build rapport. By purposefully changing your behavior, for a little period of time to resemble the other person, you can create rapport. Just long enough, to create a connection, can you turn into an adapter. By identifying areas of similarity, you can lessen the distance, and disparities between you and another person by developing rapport on purpose. This can be accomplished by using a method that Nicholas Boothman refers to as, synchronizing. 
Chapter 5 Anything that increases your shared interests and reduces your distance from the other person is a positive thing. When trying to be in sync with someone else, your major goal is to replicate what they do until they open up. You can synchronize the other person's attitude, or body language to create rapport on purpose. This kind of synchrony creates the impression, that you understand and share the person's worries. To do this, truly identify with the person, while mirroring their gestures, breathing, and facial expression. Pay attention to the tone of voice they are using, then mirror that tone back. They start to think, I don't know what it is about this person, but there's something I really enjoy. Matching means, following in the other person's steps. If she moves her left hand, you move your left hand. Mirroring means, as if you were looking at the other person in a mirror. You move your right hand, if he moves his left. But won't others see that I'm modeling their behavior, you could be asking? Actually, unless the copying is obvious, they won't. Here, tact and respect are crucial words to remember. Chapter 6. A good conversation involves more than just talking. It also involves listening. The next stage is to start a conversation. To establish trust, and create strong relationships, conversation is an essential tool. It consists of two equally crucial components, actively listening, and, asking questions. The objective is, to get the other person talking, then learn, what is important to them. Then synchronize yourself with that. Chapter 7 In a conversation, any form of encouragement is welcome. It keeps the conversation going and shows that you're listening, even, if you're not saying much. The point is to make the person speaking feel like you're listening, and caring. You can demonstrate your comprehension, by providing appropriate feedback. Encourage the other person verbally, by using words like wow, or, oh, really? And then what? Use open, and encouraging body language, to provide physical feedback. Not in agreement, and make lots of eye contact, but don't stare. Looking at your hands, occasionally, gives the impression of participation. Move to the front of your seat, and show interest. If you're standing, look the other person in the eyes, not occasionally, and appear thoughtful, or amused. Listen, and provide verbal feedback, while also demonstrating concern and interest in the other person. For example, you appear to be very interesting, and I regret, not having met you sooner. Chapter 8 The caliber of your attitude determines the caliber of your relationships, and pretty much, everything else in your life. Regardless of where you live, or what you do. A worthless attitude won't get you far. Your mind and body are connected. When you're joyful, you appear and sound joyful, and speak joyfully. Your attitudes determine the quality and attitude of your thoughts, the tone of your voice, and your words. Most crucially, they control your body language, and facial expressions. When you first meet someone, you could come across as irritable, impatient, arrogant or bored. On the other hand, having a really useful attitude means being inquisitive, passionate or helpful. The outcome of your encounter, will depend on the attitude you choose to display. Whether it is a positive, or negative one. Chapter 9. Ask yourself, what do I want? And what attitude will be the most helpful? Always project a wonderful attitude in order to come across as likable, and to be able to forge deep connections. You'll almost always get what you want if your attitude, posture, facial expression and body language is good. We hope you enjoyed this book's summary. Let us know, what did you already do to make people like you? Many thanks for liking, and subscribing. We hope to see you soon.